our last tier two animal to get will be sea scorpions. And the process will be quite similar to how we did amphibians because sea scorpions require horseshoe crabs that are eating slugs. So just like last time, we're gonna need two animals and so I'm gonna make two groups of my flatworms. In order to get horseshoe crabs, the flatworms will need to eat on these low, simple leaves. So we've got that home over there. And then for our slugs, we need our second family of flatworms to be eating these low, complex leaves. Again, both of these have been covered in previous videos. Also, I do have two types of complex leaves shown here. It doesn't matter which type you use. It just has to be a complex leaf. So I'm going to let this run until we have our horseshoe crabs and our slugs. And there we go. We've got our horseshoe crabs and our slugs. Now, just like in the amphibian video, I am going to just go ahead and kill off all of our flatworms, just so they're out of the way. And then I'm going to make a home for the, cra the horseshoe crabs in here, a home for the slugs, and then I'm also going to make some more slug families, just so there is plenty of food for the horseshoe crabs to eat. There we go. We've got our setup now in order to get our sea scorpions, and we'll just have to wait. But there is one additional thing I recommend if you only want to get sea scorpions, because with this current setup, our slugs will still be able to eat these low, simple leaves on the left. And as we've learned in a previous video, if slugs are eating low, simple leaves, they will turn into sea snails. So in order to prevent that, I'm just gonna remove these plants on the left. I'm just gonna sell them off, and that way I'm not gonna get any sea snails interrupting my adventure towards our sea scorpions. At this point, I've got my horseshoe crabs, three families of slugs for them to eat, and I've removed the low, simple leaf plants so that my slugs don't turn into sea snails. All that's left to do is let this run on top speed for a long time because our horseshoe crabs live even longer than our fish do. And so it's just gonna take a while to get through the generations for us to get our sea scorpions. But I will see you back here once that has happened. Finally, we have our sea scorpions. It only took about three hours this time. I think I got super lucky the first time I did it. it. only took me about 90 minutes, maybe a little bit more than that. But if you're trying to get your sea scorpions, it's going to take some time. So I recommend that you just get them set up and work on something else with your vivarium while you're waiting for them. Because if you're just going to wait for them, it's, it's, oh, it's so frustrating. But that's kind of how it works. Anyway. We finally got them. Let's take a look. Here we go. Got our sea scorpions. They're a little little derpy in this screen. You can't see the other other claw here, but that's okay. Um, but they do exist. Sea scorpions do exist. They just take a lot of time. Oof. Okay. Anyway, uh, I've got two other animals that I can make videos for, but I'm not sure when I'm gonna get those done, uh, hopefully soon. But they are insects, which I think come from these sea scorpions, and lizards. I have not actually made either of them yet, but once I do, I will make videos for them. So, oof. Just a recap. We've got our sea scorpions. It comes from crustaceans, eating slugs, and it takes hours. It takes so much time. Anyway, I will see you in the next tutorial.